<laughs> Hello and welcome back to this week's vlog. It's amazing to think, isn't it, that this is our axolotl pond. Lee Brindley kindly supplied us with our baby axolotls. And look at this. That is really thick. And they'll still be alive under there when it fills out. Absolutely amazing. And I can't wait till it does thaw out and spring actually turns up. Because we've got a lot to do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, it looks a bit gloomy. Yeah, that's the do that. Yeah, yeah, ready. Hold on. How's it going? All right. <laughs> it's absolutely freezing. Just giving Zara a little walk round, really just for some exercise. Goodbye, Zara. And um, have a look at this. Look at this. Working some badgers are doing here. So there's so many badgers around here, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, very pretty to see them, of course, but have a look at this. Have a look. All the way over there. So in that direction, maybe, oh, 100, 200, 200, 200 meters, there's a large badger set. And look at the damage they're doing here. So obviously, really digging down into that cold earth at night, looking for worms and things relatively deeply down and um, like everything else outside at this time of year just looking for food and trying to get enough calories in um, probably so they don't freeze freeze during the night now Bob and I have been working this week and we've been doing um, some hedge work for the f local farmer and lots and lots of robin red breasts because you see when you think it's only one and you realize although they're territorial there's quite a lot along this hedgerow and everywhere we're working, of course, they're coming to see what we're disturbing and to find the wood lice and the spiders and things that we're hiding away under the rotten logs and bits of hedge. And you look at those tiny little robins, which are so, so tiny, even compared to our tiniest birds of prey here at the Fulcrum Centre. And I look at them with my fingertips freezing off, thinking, how on earth do they find enough food to last all night long without eating uh, while they're burning those calories to keep warm when they're that small? Nature's amazing, but certainly in the winter and places like the UK, for some of these little animals, starvation is by far their biggest enemy. They only have the hours of daylight for a lot of these little birds to feed, and they have a long night of starving. And if they haven't found enough food in the day, they literally, their fuel tank just runs dry, and they just drop down dead of starvation. And pretty tough if you're a little tiny bird like that. It must be absolutely horrendous for them, really. And I should imagine those that make it to spring must feel incredibly lucky. Have a look over here. Ooh, I'm getting out of here. So someone we haven't shown you lately on the vlogs is Terry the Tenrec. Now he's a lesser hedgehog Tenrec. Lesser because there's a greater which grows bigger. 
Hedgehog Tenrec because he looks like a hedgehog. Not all Tenrecs do. And this guy here, he's a regular on our school education programmes. He comes along to cover such topics as nocturnal animals. And sometimes he disguises himself as a hedgehog when we talk about woodland animals. Now, because he's out on the road with us regularly, we're always checking him over and we like most of our animals we can see anything that needs doing straight away but he's had a long time off of work because of you know what it's 2021 and 2020 we certainly didn't do as many school visits as we normally do so what we've noticed today is his claws have got a little bit long and that's quite regular in the world he do a lot more digging and searching out food than he does in captivity so Georgia here what are you going to do Georgia I'm trying to cut his nails. You're cutting his nails. So what are you using? Any special tools? I am concentrating. I found with all our animals that I cut their nails, human ones, yeah, so just... much easier to just do a little bit at a time. Okay, now there's something that's missing that now you probably need that you didn't need the last time you cut this guy's nails. What is it? <laughs> something that... Something that's missing that's the reason you're cutting his nails and I'm not. I don't know. We'll see. Can you see very well? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, what have you had to start wearing? That oh, you didn't my have glasses. To... Ah, glasses. <laughs> now, they never stop growing, a Tenrex nails, because of course, claws, because of course, he needs them to dig out food. Scratch and really search done. for food. They do get long. And obviously, if they get too long, it will cause problems because they curl. So eventually they'd curl up and go under his own feet. Now, the reason I'm sort of He's trying really to pay close attention him. is I'm really hoping that he gets a little bit cross and bites your finger <laughs> on camera. He's got incredibly sharp insectivore teeth. Teeth even. And he's got very strong cheek muscles. And when a tenrec like this bites you, it's quite capable of hanging on. Much like a Staffordshire Bull Terrier can hang on to things. Spicy. Much to the mirth of any children in your presence. Just see these ones are longer. Oh yeah, you can really see the curl on them, can't you? Which is an interesting thing. That was the back of your hand, George. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is it not idea, normally this so. lively? Now, they're very nocturnal animals, Tenrex, so whilst you could say they'd make a cute, adorable pet, the reality is, of course, much like um, many other nocturnal animals, such as hamsters, you don't see a lot of them going about their daily lives. Interesting creatures, because they're a very prehistoric mammal as a group, the Tenrex, and they're rubbish at regulating their own body temperature, unlike us, and in fact, they're a little bit more like a reptile. And what they really like is a nice basking source within their enclosure such as a ceramic heat lamp and they'll flatten their bodies out below it and absorb the heat before going about their sort of evening activities. Oh, that one's not Terry. Certainly no relation at all to the true hedgehogs. These animals are from Madagascar. Hedgehogs don't live on Madagascar. I can see a really long one there. There's two you? really long ones there. So where is this chap here? Can you see that? You know, be very careful. They've got a, they've got a quick, of course. So just like you, if you cut them too short, you're going to go into the quick and they'll bleed. Look at that long one. Look at that. So this animal here comes out on the road at least twice a week, I'd say, in a normal year. Whereas, other than give him a cursory glance, clean his enclosure, feed him, he's not been out now. Wow. He's not actually been out properly for months now. I'm surprised, George, of his lack of sort of handling. He hasn't savaged you, and I'm really disappointed in this. Especially with your lovely um, fingernails. But of it's course, he's not, he's not really going by sight. If you watch him here, you can see his whiskers and his nose are his real sense of finding his food and his way around. All backed up by those huge ears, but his little eyes, ridiculous. How old's Terry now? I think he's about six years old now. Yeah, probably older than that. He's probably about eight years old actually. 
wonderful animals, that's a hedgehog tenrex. Make an interesting exotic pet or an exotic animal to keep and study. But of course, if you've got an animal that's going to live for sort of six to ten years, it's not something to be taken on lightly. There is actually a UK tenrex rescue because so many people buy animals like this and then get bored of them basically way before their lifespan is up and start neglecting them and not caring for them and indeed putting them in the pound so to speak going off to a rescue very strange creature so it's only clean up <laughs> he just no. yawned so he yawn. I missed that didn't I <laughs> now, he normally because he's quite a, quite a low activity channel in the day so if you do get him out and he comes out and explores he's normally not long before he has a little clean and does a wee or poo and when that's at school, most hilarious for the school children in the class. You can see he's moving a little bit slowly because the style of claws he's got, catching on the loopy sort of fluffy coated of a towel, <laughs> sometimes get caught on there. Certainly on some carpets, he does the same. Let's just see if we can get him in focus. <laughs> He, his nose twitches too much for it. Yeah, look at that. Now he's a male hedgehog tenrec, and they get like a horrible white milky substance around their eyes and the more sort of sexually active they are, the more that builds up. Um, it doesn't make them look too nice. Their faces are kind of quite puffy on the males. I can tell you now, a female lesser hedgehog tenrec Cute. is the cutest thing you've ever seen. The males not so. Job done? What do you think? Done. What's next? We've got a, got a couple more bits to do that we can put on the vlog. So he's going back in his little howdy house. <laughs> he's going to be happy. Um, no more ingrown toenails for you, Terry. Let's see what else we can find here in the exotics room. Dad, I saw you come home with a bag of hats right the other day. Why? Ah, uh, because although it's not really the full-on breeding season for anything we keep, we have got a bit going on. So in the incubator here, we've got some of our bearded dragon eggs. And my favourite snake, really, I guess, the female false water cobra. She's gravid and she's due to lay a clutch of eggs in the next few weeks. So we're getting her egg box ready, the box of her eggs going into the incubator. But I'll crack one of these open. Let's have a look at these bearded dragon eggs. So in here, I'm not sure about this one. That's not too bad. You, are, they, are you sure they've got? Um, mm -hmm. You sure? I feel that was yeah. a squishy. Oh, they got too much water, I think. No, no, they went through like that. Really? Yeah. They're not like the cobra because they're that hard. So we've got two boxes of bearded dragon eggs, and it's all from one female, one clutch. Have a look at them. Now they look a bit grubby because. The, the laying box, something for them to dig in and dig down and lay their eggs, is full of coir. And then these have gone into uh, vermiculite as a hatching substrate. So vermiculite holds a lot of moisture. So the eggs aren't on a wet substrate, but the humidity is really high within there, which is quite important to a lot of reptile eggs for them to hatch. Um, the reason it's vermiculite is it's all I had at the time. Um, but usually nowadays we use hatch right to be honest we don't we're not commercial breeders we don't need tons and tons so the cost of the hatching medium is irrelevant for the small amount we use hatch right's more expensive um, so far we found it really good to be honest I like hatch right it's no messing around it's nice clean sort of substrate for your eggs to, to be and they're gonna be there for two or three months depending on the species um, for the bearded dragon eggs vermiculite we'll give it a go it will work for, no problem um, but for the false water cobra, which sounds horrible to me, to me a bit more special, a bit more important. I really want those guys to hatch for sure. But bearded dragons. Now Georgia bred from our bearded dragons years ago while she was beginning really in her animal management stroke zoology degree. And as part of her studies into reptiles, she borrowed her friend's male bearded dragon and bred them. And we've not bred bearded dragons for years and years, but two or three um, reptile outlets that we know keep saying to us, oh, we could really do some baby bearded dragons. There's a really big demand again at the moment. Um, so we've, we've put our male, our male now, in with the girls, and they're having a whale of a time. So one clutch laid, another female due to lay anytime soon. 
hopefully in a not too distant vlog in two months time we'll show you some incredibly cute baby bearded dragons so most people have heard of a corn snake which is probably the most commonly kept pet snake nowadays by far but there's some other great stuff out there which is just as beautiful just as easy to keep and just as pettable and handleable now these guys don't really get handled by me and you can see he's flattening his head he's a little bit cross but believe me these are leopard snakes leopard snakes are a European species and there's several people nowadays breed these in the UK they're not particularly expensive at all this is a natural colour variant look at the absolute beautiful colours and patterns of this animal they don't get large, not even as large as a corn snake. And they make just wonderful study animals, or even a wonderful pet snake. Sort of a snake that grows big enough, bearing in mind this is only a year old, a snake that grows big enough to handle and be pettable, but not too large that it needs lots of room. Oh, look at that, lots of room. A European leopard snake, I think, like a lot of the European species of herptiles, reptiles and amphibians are going to be something we're going to start seeing more of there's definitely much more of a movement now from it it's at the moment it's kind of a niche a niche part of the hobby keeping the European animals but I think you're going to start to see a real uprising of keeping these wonderful European species some of the snakes, lizards and amphibians from Europe are as good as anything and as amazing to look at and study as anything in a tropical rainforest. And the added bonus for many of us keen on reptiles is that actually when we're on holiday in European countries, these are some of the things we get glimpses of or are lucky enough to discover. Beautiful. We don't need wild caught. Plenty of breeders nowadays in the UK of some of these beautiful, striking European animals. Let's pop this guy away. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.